What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be going over some essential NeoVim settings, uh, settings that will work for both NeoVim or VanillaVim. Uh, I just think I find these necessary and I basically can't live without them anymore. So as always you can hop over to my blog, I'll have every single command that I run in the video will be over there um, and we'll copy and paste just to make sure that they all still work. So you can just copy and paste everything directly into the terminal and it should just work. If you've been following along with the series, then you probably have uh, some plugin stuff. Uh, you do not need plugins at all to follow along with this video. They, they're completely unnecessary. This is just setting up uh, lots of sane defaults and useful things in the future um, for NeoVim. So what we'll do first is create a directory called general. So get that in there. And then we'll create a file within it called settings. So we'll cd into general and open up settings. We're going to take all of this text here and we're going to paste it in. All right, and then we'll go over what a few of these things do. So this just sets a leader key and it'll be a little more apparent why I set the leader key to be like this later on in a future video. But uh, yeah, so space will be our new global leader key. Um, so syntax enable, this will just enable syntax highlighting, uh, set hidden, uh, that has to do with buffers. So like if you uh, know how Vim buffers work, then you'll know that this is pretty essential for keeping other buffers open and navigating them. Um, so no wrap is, I don't like when text wraps for the most part. Um, let's see, so encoding, UTF-8, the, the um, pop-up menu height, I keep it 10. You'll see like a nice ruler. Another thing you'll notice is mouse, right? So like if I click all around, you see the cursor's up here. So I can move the cursor around with this, but I can't click and move the cursor. So that'll be updated. Um, what else? Important ones like line numbers will be set here. Um, the clipboard. So a lot of people have trouble copy and pasting in Vim. And I can see why, but you basically only need two things to easily copy and paste from Vim from anywhere to Vim and from Vim to anywhere. And then, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for this file. So we'll get out a full screen and we'll open up init.vim. All right, so let's source our new settings. And one way you can source these settings, right? Make sure you save init.vim, right? And then colon and source. And you have this variable, everybody has this variable, right? My vim rc. All right. And that sourced all of the plugins. So you don't need to leave uh, vim to source your vim RC or your, your init.vim. It used to be called a vimrc, so that's why it's called my vimrc. So here's the ruler, um, here's the tab line up here at the top. Uh, we'll get a few other things like, okay, now I should be able to click around, see? And we get that. So that's all good. Um, the next thing we'll do is some keys. So let's save that and create a directory called keys. And a file called mappings.vim inside there. Now what we'll do is we'll open up mappings.vim and we'll add all of these mappings. And these are much saner defaults uh, for key mappings, in my opinion. So now we got those. So this is just better nav for OmniComplete. Uh, if you're doing completion, it just like lets you navigate a little bit easier. Uh, this will, you can use, M stands for Alt, right? So Alt now will work with resizing windows. Um, I really do hate escape and after this you'll be able to see, okay, I can press JK really fast or KJ really fast and I'll go right from insert mode to escape mode. This is easy caps right here. It's just like this thing I picked up from a tutorial once where you can essentially just press control U over top of a word and then it instantly gets capitalized. Um, tab for general mode. So what this will do is move in between buffers. So if you have multiple buffers open, you can just like cycle through them forwards and backwards. 
uh, some alternate ways to save. Control C also to get out of uh, get out of insert mode and get into you know escape was just such in my opinion a terrible design choice. I think it turns a lot of people off from uh, from Vim. It's just so difficult. Um, then another thing is this. So this is just tab completion. Better tabbing. So here's watch this. Okay, if I tab these over, I lose I lose the hold on the tabs, right? So I need to go do it again, and that sucks. So you'll notice that when I have this active, I'll be able to keep it until I'm done tabbing, which I think is a lot better. And then better window navigation. So you'll see I'll be able to navigate through windows a lot easier. All right, we'll save that and open init.vim. So now we just need to source our mappings like everything else. And I hope you're starting to realize that your init.vim is a lot cleaner now and everything is starting to make a lot more sense. All right, now that we saved that, um, well, let's see if it worked. So I have this one command in my settings that essentially what it'll do is it'll, whenever you save init.vim, it'll source itself. So let's find out if it worked. So what we'll do is v split and that'll give us a vertical split. And I'll press Control H to jump over here, Control L to jump over there. So now we can jump in between. If we want to resize, we'll press um, Alt and these buttons. So now we can resize everything. Um, forget what a few of the other ones did. So actually, we can press this one. I'm pressing Tab right now and cycling in between um, different buffers, right? So let's go to our mappings and I'm typing GF on top of these. This is another thing that's really nice about having this file is I can just press GF and then I'm in it. So I can just navigate all over the place very easily instead of having one long ass file. Um, navigation, oh yeah, the tabbing. This is awesome in my opinion, right? So, okay, I can just tab and I find that so much better. I don't know, I don't know why this isn't just the default way to do things. Uh, oh yeah, escape. So if I go like this, right, like, if, I don't know, if I'm here and I press JK really fast, well, then I'm in escape again, right? Or I'm in normal mode again. And the same thing with KJ. So I find that very useful. I barely ever use the other one, the control C. And I went over resizing and I won't go over on the complete for now. So, all right. So those are our key mappings. And now what we'll do the next thing I want to do is get NeoVim healthy. Um, mine will be healthy, but yours probably isn't, um, unless you already know about this. So we'll open up NVim, and then we're going to just check our health. So you can press tab, check health. Now for me, I already have a clipboard tool installed, so I can already copy and paste very easily, but you may not be able to. Um, you'll notice I don't have the Python 2 provider. You don't really need the Python 2 provider. You don't really need the Node.js provider, and I've never come across needing the Ruby provider. The one that you will need is Python 3 for the most part. And all you have to do to get that is if you're on uh, Mac, you probably already have PB copy, so you probably don't have an issue, but that's the thing that this will find. I have Excel, right? And on Linux, you'll always need to install Excel. So on Ubuntu, you can sudo apt install Excel. And on Arch Linux, you can pacman s Excel. Um, another thing you'll need to do to get the Python support is install pyenvim. Um, so you can pip install that. And if you want node support as well, you can do npmi globally install uh, neovim to wherever you're keeping your node binary, right? So that's good. I think that will handle most people because I don't think most people, if you don't program in Python a lot, but I do a lot of programming in Python and a lot of programming in Node. So essentially what I have to do is when I change virtual environments, um, and if you know anything about Python and virtual environments and all this stuff, when I change them, I'm looking at a different binary. I'm looking at a different Python binary and a different Node binary. So I don't have that support anymore. So what some people do is, and what people do who want to continue to have that support, is set up a static path where you always install pyenvim. And you can do that by setting the Python 3 host prog and the node host prog, just like that. So after installing these, you should be able to check health again. 
and notice that, okay, we have clipboard and we have um, pyenvim. All right, so what we'll do is leave there. And that's pretty much it. That should cover most use cases. And uh, I think NeoVim will be a lot more usable for you now. Uh, you can check out this blog. I'll leave a link in the description at the bottom of the video. Make sure to like and subscribe.